Well, welcome everyone to the Brown University School of Public Health MPH information session. My name is Matt Wallace. I'm the Assistant Director of Student Recruitment and Marketing here at the SPH. And I am joined here with my friends and colleagues, uh, leadership of the MPH program, current students of the MPH program, staff, and we are all just super stoked really just over the moon excited that you're here. It's an awesome turnout, which is great because we need public health professionals really badly. Uh, we are going through a lot of different public health crises. I mean, everything from COVID to climate change, um, addiction, nutrition, our reproductive rights are being taken away, for goodness sakes. So we need you to be public health professionals. And we're really excited that you're passionate about public health and you're here and hopefully you'll learn a little bit about Brown and the MPH program. Essentially what we'll do is we'll have a little presentation and then we will open things up um, for a student panel and then open things up for uh, a Q&A at the end. So thanks again. And I do wanna introduce um, our leader of the MPH program, the graduate program director, Professor Annie Yelsevic, who, um, you know, actually got her PhD from Brown too some years some years back, which is really cool and has a lot of experience here at Brown and also with the Rhode Island Department of Health, was an epidemiologist there. So um, Annie, do you want to say a few words to the to our guests? Yeah, so welcome um, all of you. I really echo what Matt is saying about what's needed in public health right now. There is um, a lot of public health uh, uh, issues that need to be addressed going forward. And there's been quite a bit of turnover and coming up turnover um, of public health professionals um, given everything that's happened. Um, and it was actually happening prior to COVID. Um, so um, that has definitely accelerated it, but uh, it was an older workforce. Um, and uh, I include myself. <laughs> um, and so, um, just it's great to have people interested in it. Um, we're really excited to tell you about Brown um, so you can see if this is a good fit for you for your next step because um, we really want you um, to many people to go into public health and do what works best for them. Um, I also, I did work at the Rhode Island Department of Health for about 10 years um, as an epidemiologist. Um, the When you're in a Department of Health, you tend to be a bit of a generalist. So I bounced between areas, so I won't list them all, but um, it was formative experience um, and um, really pleased to have those colleagues and have had that experience. So uh, really happy now. It made me, when I was there, want to participate in education and training so that we could keep uh, really bolstering the infrastructure and the workforce of public health. So that's why I'm here now. Thank you so much, Annie. And speaking of participation, um, let's dive in and do some participation right off the bat. I, I always love these virtual sessions because people can join us from Hey, Verdant, what's going on? Yeah, and please uh, use your uh, camera hey, as well. How are you doing? I was just talking to Malik about you. Uh, I just saw Malik yesterday. Sorry to inter. Now I'm making this like one on one with me and Verdant. So uh, sorry about that. I get distracted easily, as you can see. Um, but anyway, uh, so let's participate. Um, one of the coolest things about these virtual sessions is that people can join us from all over the world and all over the country. And um, so if everybody can pop into the chat box, um, where they're joining us from, you know, city, state, country, and then maybe also like what the weather's like or the temperature, because that's always interesting to, to know too. So everybody go ahead and pop that into the chat right now. All right, we got Philadelphia, Boston, Cambridge, a little cloudy, Lebanon, cool, North Carolina, Maryland, Jersey, China, what time is it in China right now? It's gotta be pretty early, early, early in the morning or late, 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 right? Yeah, 106, thank you so much for joining us. You're like, it would have been nice if you told me that this was gonna be recorded and maybe I wouldn't have to show up at 106 a.m. Um, awesome, very cool, Ghana, Nepal. Here in Providence, very cool. Is that Hakarta? Is that how you pronounce that? 
cloudy. Awesome. Oregon, nice. Yeah, so all over. So it's super rad. Thank you so much for participating and, and sharing that with us because public health, as you know, is a global pursuit. So it's really cool to see everybody joining us from all over. So without further ado, I'll go ahead and start the presentation. Let me go ahead and share the screen. And put it in low pres mode. And then feel free, if you have any questions throughout the presentation, we have, you know, staff leadership, um, you know, students here that can answer any questions that you may have throughout the presentation. So you don't have to wait until the end. Um, so what are we going to talk about? Oh, first of all, can everybody see the presentation and everything and hear me okay? Just a little thumbs up. Awesome. Thank you. Um, so we're going to talk about our mission, uh, Brown by the Numbers, our quirky little creative city of Providence. Office of Diversity and Inclusion, of course, the MPH program, and then admissions and how to connect with us. So our leadership, um, Dean O'Bear, amazing. He's been a part of so many different kinds of uh, public health uh, professions. I mean, he's worked for the government, academia. Uh, he's worked, you know, in healthcare. He's worked for the CDC. He was the chief of epidemiology. He was the commander of the U.S. Public Health Service. And he's really an advocate for students, which is the, the aspect about him that I really love. And he, he cares, especially cares about, you know, getting the best and brightest students that have come from, you know, underrepresented um, groups, which is really, which is really important in, in one of our most salient missions that we have here. So uh, love having uh, Ron as our Dean. And then of course, Dean Ranny as well. She's super smart, uh, emergency doctor, and does a lot of innovative uh, research for um, uh, violence prevention, which is really rad. And it's just a really sweet person too. Just kindness um, just exudes from her. So she's so we're just really lucky to have both Ron and Megan um, as our as our leadership here. Um, our mission to, to improve the health of all populations. That should be the mission for every school of public health, I think. But what kind of separates um, Brown is that we really want to focus on helping those populations that are the most vulnerable, right? We believe strongly that every single human being um, has the right to be healthy. And that means healthy physically, healthy mentally, and healthy emotionally. And that starts with helping those that are most vulnerable, right? Those that are affected by the social determinants of health um, and fighting those inequities and trying to get rid of those disparities in health. So that's really what we're focused on. Our values, diversity, and inclusion, it's, uh, it's paramount to everything that we do. And our vision is to champion health and health equity around the world. So we really want to prepare the next, like, like uh, Annie was mentioning, you know, uh, prepare the next leaders in public health, you know, prepare the youth to be the next leaders in public health. So that's what we're all about. Numbers are always fun. So we're top 10 in NIH funding, which is really great. Uh, top 8% in US News and World Rankings of the top schools in public health in 2022. We have 13 world renowned research centers. I'll show you some of those right now. Everything from our very first research center, the Center for Alcohol and Addiction Studies, um, to our newest um, center, uh, Mindfulness Center. And public health is so interdisciplinary and multidisciplinary by nature that you're going to be working within a lot of different groups. You're not just going to be kind of stuck on a track. Uh, there's our building, uh, that missing piece being you, of course. And uh, we have a very low student to faculty ratio. Uh, our our faculty is, is awesome. They're at the top of their fields and they love working with students. I think that's really great. We have a very collaborative kind of nature here. So you're gonna get that mentorship that you need to really be successful, not only academically, but also professionally and personally as well. So what defines us? Learn public health by doing public health. That is our motto and our credo and our ethos. What does that mean? That means that you're going to learn the theory aspect of public health, but we really want you to be able to apply that, you know, move freely from the classroom to the research centers, into the community, make an impact while you're a student here. And that applied public health experience is built into the MPH program as well. We'll talk about that a little later. 
And Rhode Island is the perfect collaboratory. It's a small place. It's only a, a million people, only uh, a thousand, thousand square miles. Um, but it really lends itself to collaboration. So you can collaborate with physicians from Alpert Medical School, from uh, students from RISD, from, with nonprofits, environmentalists, um, policymakers. Uh, we've got a lot of connections with the Rhode Island uh, Department of Health. And there's only one Department of Health, it's state level, you know, the Rhode Island Department of Health. So you can make an impact on the state level. And you can try out interventions, it's easier. There's less bureaucracy, less red tape. So it's actually easier to kind of start your public health initiatives here in Rhode Island, just because we're small. Uh, so it's, it's really neat. Like we were the first to introduce a harm reduction center. Um, and a lot of that's due to the size and, and the less you know, red tape to get this done and also our research and, and of course, Brandon Marshall. Um, so we're really lucky to be in this kind of position. Lots of support if you need it. Writing Center, help you with your uh, thesis. We have LGBTQ Center. We are the first school to have an undocumented first generation and low income student center. Uh, career Lab and our own career services to help you with life after Brown. So lots of stuff if you're interested in it. Brown's been around for quite a long time, founded in 1764. We're the seventh oldest college in the United States. I like that we were the first American college to welcome students from all religious backgrounds. And I believe that kind of progressive spirit is still with us today. Um, we're, we're generally recognized as probably the most progressive out of all the Ivy League uh, schools. And I really like that about us. Uh, Providence is a super rad city. Um, I, you know, I don't know how many of you have been here. I didn't know what to expect before I, I moved to Providence. I lived in Newport and then um, in Washington Park, but it is like a hidden gem. It is a super rad city. There's almost 400 miles of coastline. You can walk everywhere. Like you can see the, the walk score on there is 90. Um, the food is a lot better than I expected. And there's a lot more variation as well. Uh, it's very culture, um, culturally fulfilling. Like theater is really good. Art is really good. Uh, so, and it's still affordable for now. I don't know how long this is going to last. Once people start realizing how nice it is here, I think, you know, the prices will go up, but compared to like Boston and New York and stuff, it's actually pretty affordable to live. Um, and I just pulled up some of this. Has anybody heard of, I don't even know if I'm pronouncing this right. Is it Hugh, Hugh, uh, Annie, have you heard of that? Oh yeah. So my Nordics have Hig. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. That's the proper way. And and so I guess this means like it it kind of it means like cozy in a way. Is that what it means? So I thought that was so cute because I've always heard, you know, like Providence is cozy and cosmopolitan. So um the proof is in the pudding right there. Uh, and I'll have to just work on that um pronunciation. I'll I'll get with you later, Annie, and we'll work that out. <laughs> Uh, we have our own Office of Diversity and Inclusion led by Jamie Potter Rutledge and Maria Elena Del Pozo. They're amazing. We have a lot of different initiatives. I really like LEAD, which is learning and engaging around diversity. Uh, you'll, you have a lot of community, a lot of connection, talk about things like medical mistrust or ableism or um, implicit versus explicit bias. We have the Women of Color Collective. OSTEM is really cool. That's for uh, members of the LGBTQIA community who are interested in the STEM fields. Um, and we want to let all flowers bloom. So if you have like an initiative or a program that you want to get started, like let us know and we'll get that off ground. Like the best initiatives are usually student led. So we definitely encourage that. Why you're all here, the MPH, um, you will get a highly customized, highly personalized experience with the MPH. That's the coolest thing about it. Uh, we realize and recognize that not all students are the same. So we really tailor um, our academic um, you know, education to your needs. Uh, so one of the ways we do that is with a lot of different concentrations. So we have the interdisciplinary concentration, which is essentially make your own concentration a lot of ways. So you don't get more customized than that. Uh, we also have epidemiology, maternal and child health, which Annie also has experience with, um, global health, health behavior, health services, and then our newest one, mindfulness and addiction. Um, so you'll have five required courses. That's kind of like your foundational courses, like your epidemiology, biostatistics, things of that nature. 
five courses within your concentration. And don't worry, you don't have to pick your concentration until after your first semester. We will ask it on the application. We're curious to know what, you, what your interests are, um, but you don't have to pick it at, uh, until after your first semester if you don't want to. And then you'll have two electives, uh, which is nice. So you have some flexibility there as well. And then you'll have an applied public health experience or internship. That's just our fancy way of saying internship. And then um, your thesis, which is really cool because not every MPH program has a thesis requirement. And I think that it really sets you up for um, success if, if you want to continue your education and get your PhD as well. It's a good stepping stone for that as well. Now, I don't know. Is Joe here with us? Is Joanne Barrio? Um, no, I was going to have her speak a little bit more about the um, APHE, but Diane, do you want to add anything to this slide? Because Diane really is uh, the guru of all of this. Diane Schlachter, she is the uh, assistant director of the MPH program, and she's brilliant. So I'm going to have Diane introduce herself really quickly. And then if you have anything to add to this slide, Diane, just let me know. Hi, I'm Diane Schlachter, assistant director. I don't know about the brilliant part, um, <laughs> but um, yeah, I don't really have anything specific to add. I mean, students do, um, as Matt said, you don't really need to pick your concentration until the sort of first semester towards the end, but sometimes there's a course that's best taken in the first semester, um, depending on which concentration you wanna do. So it's always good to be sort of at least thinking about what your first choice concentration is if you decide to apply, even though you don't really have to commit um, in that first semester. So, so that's all. Awesome, thank you so much, appreciate that. Um, and then within the MPH program is the Health Equity Scholars Program. This is super cool. Definitely one of my favorite programs that we have at the school. So essentially, um, you're applying to the MPH um, and those that are able to get into the Health Equity Scholars Program, if you have uh, graduated from an HBCU, a historically black college or university or an HSI, a Hispanic serving institution, or if you're a native Rhode Islander or current Rhode Islander, you're eligible for this program. And what's so neat about this program is you get financial support. So up to a full scholarship, I believe, I mean, we still say that language up to a full scholarship, but I don't think anybody's ever gotten less than a full scholarship yet. We'll see, knock on wood, but just to be technically sound, uh, up to a full scholarship. Um, and then you get leadership training, one-on-one -on -one coaching, enhanced mentorship, networking opportunities. So there's a question in the application, the SOFAS application, that'll ask you if you're interested, and you can just click on that if you are. It's super rad. Uh, tuition fees. So this is kind of like one of the drawbacks, I think, of Brown in general is we're pricey, right? It's an expensive program. So $7,342 per, per course, easy for me to say, um, and 12 courses. So that, I'm not good at math, but it's like close to 90000 or something. I think that's around 89000 88000 or something like that. Am I right about that? I don't know. Um, but that's more than I got, a lot more than I got in my bank account. So it's really important that when you're making your decision on where you want to go to school, that you weigh out everything, right? So the cool thing is that you'll automatically be considered for a merit scholarship. You don't have to do anything additionally for that. Once you submit your application, you'll be evaluated for a merit scholarship um, and you can get you know, nothing from the merit scholarship or you can get like 33% covered or 50% covered. Um, and then we have a few Dean scholarships that cover 100% as well. So um, that's a cool opportunity. We have need-based aid for both international and domestic students. So that's another opportunity to fund your education. Lots of outside scholarships as well. And then you could do loans and stuff like that. Um, try to stay away from private loans if you can. They're, they're the worst. <laughs> the interest uh, rates are ridiculous. Um, but the cool thing about education is like you're getting a good return on your investment, right? The ROI is good, especially Brown. Brown has a really good ROI. I think, I think the debt to income ratio is something like 0.65 or something like that, which is really good. Um, I think it's like third or fourth on the list. Now, Harvard's is really good. There's like 0.35. So if you can get into Harvard, maybe go for that because their uh, debt to income ratio is super good. Um, but, uh, but yeah, so it's definitely something to think about and there's a lot of support when it comes to funding career outcomes. So 
the cool thing about the MPH degree is that you can, it's really kind of like a Swiss army knife of skill sets, right? So you're going to have these core competencies and you're going to be able to go in a lot of different directions if you want to. If you want to work in academia or if you want to work in consulting or government or healthcare or for a nonprofit, you can see this is where our students go. 93% of our MPH students have postgraduate plans within 12 months. Uh, so it's really great to see all of these opportunities and there's a really great network at Brown um, and a great alumni network too. a lot of alumni come back and help support our current students. Career services. So not only do you have like career services at Brown as a whole Brown University, but it, within the School of Public Health, we have a lot of personalized career advising, uh, nationwide internships, job internship advice, tip sheets, programs, um, events all kinds of different resources for you because that's what it's all about, making a difference in public health, right? And then admissions. So the application's open, just opened yesterday. Um, I can't believe it's here. It's like a mini Christmas for me. Um, I really love it. So it's open on sofas or sofas express, depending on what you're wanting to apply to. And we do have application fee waivers available to those um, uh, who, are part of like initiatives or programs that are set to give education um, opportunities to those from either low income or from diverse backgrounds. The GRE is not required, yay! Um, but we still wanna set you up for success. So it is important because even though the MPH program is not like a, a STEM designated program yet, uh, there is a lot of like quantitative parts to this program. So we really want to see that you're, we want to set you up for success while you're here. So it might be important um, to just to see if you could take, you know, classes like statistics or linear algebra or calculus or something along those lines. Um, so you're prepared for, for classes like biostatistics and epidemiology and things like that. Um, of course, official transcripts you'll need, personal statement, that's really where you're going to differentiate yourself from the crowd. Um, really kind of communicate why you're passionate about public health, um, you know, what you plan to do at Brown, what you plan to do after Brown, uh, and, and the way it works at Brown, it's like so holistic, which I really love, because I've actually sat in these meetings. It's so much less of, are you good enough for Brown? And it's so much more of like, are we good enough for you? Like, are we a good fit, right? Uh, do we have the resources? Do we have the faculty? Do we have the community connections that you need to be successful? Like, we're not Johns Hopkins. We're not gonna have a billion different programs, right? But what we have, we specialize in. So if it's a good fit, um, you can really thrive here and work with some of the best you know, faculty and um, colleagues in the world. Uh, and of course, your CV resume is required. And then for those that um, come from a non-English speaking country, or um, then you'll, uh, the IELTS or TOEFL is required, and then reference letters. Um, so letters of recommendation, essentially. Two of those three hopefully will be academic by nature. And then a school is only as good as its students. We have the best students on the planet. Yes, I'm biased and you're gonna, about to meet uh, a few of them right now, but definitely reach out to them because they're gonna have a, a different perspective. You know, they're in the trenches. They're doing it every single day. They know what the, the you know, relationships between faculty and students are, and they know all the cool places to go and all the great study spots and all that stuff. So definitely reach out to our student ambassadors. They're amazing. And then uh, connect with us on social media as well. There we are, we're right there on the water, which is so lovely. And um, yeah, so that, that ends the presentation. I'm gonna go ahead and stop sharing my screen. And I'd like to open, now I'd like to introduce our student and our, our, yeah, our student panel. So I'm gonna start, so what do I'd like to do? I see Lena, I see Lucille, um, and then let's see, it's Kalechi here. Let me just see. There's a lot of people here, so it's hard to find people. <laughs> let's see. Oh, okay. Kalechi, if you're here, if you can, um, if you can turn on your video so I can see you, that'd be amazing. 
but first and foremost, um, I'm going to introduce if I'm going to have you introduce yourselves. If you can just say your name, your concentration or research interest, and then a funny or interesting fact about yourself, that would be awesome. So I am going to start with Lena. I'm going to put you on the spot. Hi, everyone. I'm so glad you guys could make it uh, to this session. Um, my name is Lena. I'm a rising second year. So it'll be my last year of the MPH program um, at Brown. And my concentration is epidemiology. Um, so heavy on the quantitative. Um, and my research interests um, as of now is mental health promotion. Um, specifically as it relates to substance use and eating disorders. Um, so that's kind of what my uh, internship and research experience um, have been focused around thus far. Um, so if you guys have any questions, um, not just during this session, but otherwise my information is on the Brown Student Ambassadors website. So you can always reach out to me um, or to the other students that are here. Um, and I'll go ahead and pass it along to. Uh, interesting fact. Oh, oh, sorry. Interesting fact. <laughs> I forgot. Um, interesting fact. I've met Justin Bieber before um, in New York. Um, this was like 2016 or something. But yeah, he was very nice. And um, yeah, he was. Well, I love he was, that. It was unexpected, but he was just like walking around and um with the bodyguard so he was very nice though but were you able to get like an autograph or a picture with him or did you not want to like bug him in that way? um I didn't bug him too much but I did uh he did follow me on Twitter so I like hey. gave him like, a little thing <laughs> and I was um so he followed me on Twitter but yeah so. love that thank you so much Lena uh Lucille you want to go next and introduce yourself yeah, sure. So hi, everyone. So like Lena was mentioning, excited for all of you to join us today. Um, so my name is Lucille. I'm also a second year or rising second year MPH student. I'm in the health services concentration. Um, my research interests um, right now are um, related to long COVID. So management of any complex diseases or, um, or conditions and multimorbidity in general. Um, and I did see there were a few questions about having like a research position. So I actually have been involved in um, research throughout the past year and also in the coming year as well. So um, on the website, there's a huge list of all the research centers at Brown. So do feel free to take a look at that um, and feel free to shoot any questions um, to any of us if you are interested in joining. Um, and yeah, fun fact about me. Um, I guess for all the international students on the call, I am from calling from Montreal, Canada right now. So um, representation from uh, other parts of the world. Um, and fun fact, uh, I have gone skydiving before. I want to do it again. <laughs> um, but yeah, I'll get to, to find a place in Rhode Island, but hopefully there will be one and I can give it a shot this year. Braver than I am, I'll tell you that much. Thank you so much, Lucille. I appreciate that. Um, Kalechi, you want to go next? Introduce yourself? Sure thing. Sure. Um, thank you, Matthew. Uh, sorry for the meeting tardy had a conflict but hello you everyone made it just on time i mean you <laughs> literally came just on time so it's perfect oh perfect good, <laughs> good timing then um hello everyone my name is kolechi um like lucille and i'm also a um rising second year mph student um if we're talking about research uh, my research is in health system design um i'm on the interdisciplinary track so i have a self-designed curated um curriculum based on my own interest in healthcare leadership and management and my thesis right now is going to be focusing on uh, Medicare uh, health insurance quality um, assessment, comparing that to um, financial health statuses of uh, low income communities. So I'm actually looking forward to dive into that. Um, fun fact about me is I have a yellow belt in Taekwondo and I have visited uh, 10 countries so far. Wow, nice. Thank cool. You. Very interesting. Love that. All right, so um, I'll get you three started with a couple of questions, and then we're going to open up the questions um, to our guests here. Uh, but I guess the first question would be that now that you're here, what are three things that you really love about either Brown University or the MPH program? 
Um, and whoever wants to, to start first, uh, just go ahead and jump right in. I can start. Um, I guess in terms of the MPH program at Brown specifically, um, again, being an interdisciplinary um, competency student here, it's actually been really cool to be able to like steer my own ship and really get all the support needed to make what I want to do within public health and healthcare in general, my own like creation. And it's given me a lot of like flexibility in terms of knowing what it is I want to explore further. And it's been really cool seeing that program being so um, tailored to your own specific interests. Cause I've seen other people do disciplinary for um, tech and innovation, for computer science, for um, medical epidemiology, like in terms of position counts, not even just of diseases. So it can be really whatever you want it to be, which is really cool. Um, another cool thing with the MPH program is, which I'm sure you guys know, it's small. So you actually get really good um, feedback and one-on-one -on -one time with your professors, which, you know, I like the fact that I'm not just a number, I'm actually a person and they know my name and they know what, I'm, what I like and they can refer me to people. Um, and the last thing I'll say is, um, that Brown is a is a cool place that has a lot of eclectic people, a lot of different kinds of backgrounds, um, interests, and no one person is the same. There's not really a, a bucket I need to characterize any, you know, Brown MPH or in general, any Brown student. So hope that helps. Yeah, I can um, second that. Um about the small uh, program size. I think that not only helps with like connecting students to faculty, um, not just like in an academic setting, but also with their research interests, um, but also it helps really like socially just to like meet um, your classmates and talk to them and um, connect with them outside of the classroom. Um, it really facilitated like making friendships for me this past year, um, which is always helpful when you're moving to like a completely new place and starting a new program. And it was right out of undergrad for me. So um, that definitely helped. Um, and another thing, um, as Kalechi mentioned, um, just the diverse backgrounds uh, you'll find at Brown and lots of good, uh, multicultural food, um, especially on Thayer Street. Um, so there's always, you know, like you can always grab a bite to eat with your friends after class, um, a good coffee shop. So that's just like some of the charm of Providence. Um, and you also have a really good view of the river from the public health campus because it's right on the water. So if you're lucky and you have like a classroom with um, a window or something, you can kind of see that. Um, so yeah, a lot of great aspects academically, socially, um, and just geographically too. It's great. Yeah, I'll second that with the, the coffee shops too. Uh, Providence has the most coffee shops and donut shops per capita in the United States. I don't know how public healthy that is, but it's delicious and awesome. The so, donuts, yeah. the donuts are immense. I have to agree with that. Right? You know, if you're not careful, like you'll you'll have at least two a day if you're not careful. <laughs> I'm going to pull out my other Nordic saying, which is all things in moderation. In moderation. Yeah. So also, so yeah, use that brown gym if you, if you go up, up on campus. <laughs> Lucille, do you want to add to that question? Yeah. Um, well, I totally, well, I third, I guess at this point or fourth, <laughs> all of everything that everyone else was saying. Um, but in, definitely in addition to being like a smaller size program, I'd say that the environment is very collaborative. Um, like Kalechi and I, we've both actually taken a lot of classes together in the past year. And um, at least in the classes that we've been in, like if you ever have a question about anything, like students are really happy to help each other out. Um, you can ask the TAs, ask the teacher, ask the professors, like they're all very um, excited to help you on your learning or academic journey. So um, it's really like a place where you're able, like you feel comfortable asking questions um, and that they're all, everyone, like in this learning environment, like all around you, they're all there to like help support you um, as you sort of navigate the MPH program itself. So um, yeah, I'd say that definitely, that's definitely one of the highlights of the program. Awesome, thank you. 
Um, now I want to open up things to our guests. So if um, if you have a question to ask our student panel, if you could use the raise hand feature and then I'll call on you and then you can unmute and ask, uh, that would be awesome. So if anybody has any questions, um, anything's good. Uh, so go ahead and raise your hand. Oh, I see somebody already. Um, is it ECOC? I'm sorry. My no, it's okay. My name is long. It's Estiosa, but you can call me SA. SA. Oh, cute. I love that. All right, cool. Go, go right ahead. I just wanted to ask, I'm a recent graduate from the University of Maryland, and I wanted to ask if there are any tips you guys would suggest for a student going through a gap year before applying to their master's program? Like what things you guys would be looking for? Like what or what specific things would one be doing during this time to help, I guess, boost the application before they apply? And Maybe I'll take that one. Um, so there's so many things. Um, so we really appreciate a, a balanced cohort and that everybody is coming into public health and the MBH program with their own unique experiences and backgrounds and skills. So I would say if it's something that makes you come alive and do what, you know, do what you're going to do. It does not have to, it could be research, but it doesn't have to be research. It could be in public health, but it doesn't have to be in public health. You know, we need interdisciplinary, we need people from other fields. Um, so I know that's sort of a non-answer of telling, guiding you for your gap year, um, but I do really think that there isn't one path or one thing that can bolster it. Um, and we're really looking for a lot of balance, but sort of within people, but also across the co we really strongly believe that students learn a lot from each other and we're hoping to you know gather together a group to do that um so that's my answer i love that does that does that help answer your question essay yes it does thank you so much awesome thank you both um maggie i see your hand is up do you want to go ahead and unmute yourself and ask away Yes, absolutely. Um, thank you for holding the session. It's very helpful. Um, so just uh, more advice, I guess. Um, so I actually just completed my PhD um, at University of Connecticut in kinesiology. My research is in occupational heat stress and has really gone the more public health realm. And I believe that because of this, I really need to have a better um, you know, education within the, the public health um, sector um, with an MPH. And so I do a lot of research and I know you had mentioned there's research assistantships and things like that, but um, wanted to see how much involvement the MPH students have, um, e I, either if, you know, if they have already have a, a research degree or is it primarily just the PhD students who have the most focused um, or emphasis on, on research in the, uh, public health uh, department? I I would actually, so I, I don't think so. And I guess if one of our current students wants to sort of talk about their experience, that might be more compelling than just me saying. Right. <laughs> um, yeah, so like with, with what Amy has said, um, to, to your point, their research is a big component of the MPH regardless of their research background or not. Um, from the first year, you're basically going to be diving into like self-designed research um, projects um, based on your core curriculum classes, like in biostatistics. Um, but there's also opportunities to do outside research and connect with um, professors outside of traditional RA roles. Um, it really depends on how much you want, honestly. There is a set baseline for a research component, especially with the fact that you have a thesis at the end of your MPH, but if you are really want to dive into the research component of your specific interest, you can definitely explore that as early as you want, but it's not going to be expected, if that makes sense. Yeah, um, yeah I'm also wondering if there's like, I guess you kind of answered my question, but um, some level of independence, because I do have a, a strong research background, just not in a really public health lens, more like physiological effects of of heat and things like that. So um, I didn't want to go into a program and then feel like I'm kind of learning something I've already learned before. Um, so just wanted to see your insight on that. Um, in terms of independence? Um, yeah, so like say, since I already have like a terminal degree in 
Like if I, you know, were to do the MPH program, if I am able to kind of collaborate with faculty as well, um, as well as having that educational um, experience or um, whatever that traditionally isn't what, you know, is a path considered. So can I jump in there? Um, we, yes, yeah, so there's a couple of, there's two places that can happen. So so the, the first is we try to give a lot of choice in even the core requirements. So for instance, a student that already has experience with biostatistics can take a, 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 a course that's designed higher, for that higher level. students that don't. Yeah. Same with epidemiology. Um, and then the thesis work is the student collaborating with um, at least one faculty member, but they could also coll collaborate two people. So one of those can be from outside Brown too. So if you have a network already um, to create a research experience. So um, if you have something you know you wanna do, someone you know you wanna do it with, but you wanna bring that public health lens to it, that could be your thesis. And it can start from wherever you are with those faculty members. Awesome, thank you, that was very helpful. Yeah, great question, Maggie. Um, my good old friend, Verdant. Yes, good afternoon, y'all. It's 1.43 in North Carolina, so I'm sorry if it's morning or night for somebody. But my name is Verdant Julius. I'm a graduating senior at North Carolina a and State University and HBCU in North Carolina. And I just want to say thank y'all for taking the time to like share this information. It's so helpful. Um, I have two questions. Um, the first is pertaining to admissions, but I just wanted to know what are like some tips that you all will recommend for really creating a competitive and strong personal statement. And then the second question is more so about the practicum experience um, and for the students and like how did you all like connect with your internships and can you can you describe the experience that you had at your internships? So I could answer the first part and then the students I think can answer the second part but um, for, for the statement of purpose I mean we really want to know what your interests are um, you know, as specifically as you can be. We really want to know that. It doesn't need to be five pages long. Um, you know, like a, a one and a half, two pages is fine. Um, you know, we're sort of, we want to know why did you get interested in public health? Sort of what is your experience in public health if you have any? And, you know, what are you hoping to get out of this? What do you want to do in the future? All those things, if you know them. Sometimes people don't know all of those things or you don't have a lot of experience, but you know where you what you want to do. Um, that's really what you should focus on. It doesn't need to be a super long. We don't need to know everything you've ever, ever done in your life. Um, but, you know, try to keep it focused on what's my interests? What have I done? What do I want to do? Why do I want to come to Brown? You know, maybe the concentration, if you know that. So that's what we're, we're looking for in the, in the personal statement. And then as, as far as your second question about the applied public health experience, maybe the students can, can talk to about how they got connected for that and what they're, what they're doing for that. So um, who wants to go? I'll, I can start. Um, so I know her name came up um, earlier. Uh, the director of the um, public health program, um, or at least uh, Joanne Barrow, she's very good about um, sent, like connecting students with a bunch of job opportunities, internship opportunities. There's a weekly newsletter um, that she sends out um, that has a bunch of opportunities at the bottom and they're in the they're, there's like a huge range of um like areas of research and um, that can tailor to students research interests so there's never like a shortage of that um so there's just so much guidance in the public health program and uh there's a lot again the faculty at um, the Pu School of Public Health. Um, if you find that, you know, one of your professors for a class is, um, you know, researching or studying something that interests you, there's always an opportunity to talk to them and chances are they'll 
have people they can connect you with or research labs um, at the School of Public Health um, or just in the Providence area. So um, yeah, there's, there's a lot of like communication uh, constantly. And there's also a School of Public Health career portal um, that you can always check and it's constantly being updated. So um, I would say um, for now, you don't have to worry about that, but once you um, hopefully get here um, and join the program, uh, there's, there's gonna be a lot of time and guidance um, to figure that out as you're also figuring out your own research interests. And that'll come from, you know, just your experience in the classroom and also um, outside of the classroom, so. Yeah, just to quickly add on to what um, Lena was mentioning, um, people have like a variety um, of different um, internship experience. So I know like for me, I'm doing it through my research position. So um, if you do actually end up joining a research center, you could actually have that experience count towards the APHE component. Um, I know of people who they're actually like home for the summer in their own state, and then they decided to get involved in their local community health department um, and do work with them. I know some people are like doing an internship with ABC News, so more like health communications, um, things like that. So it's all, um, yes, yeah, so it's really, if you pay attention to the emails that Joanne Barrio sends out um, every week or so, and also there's like a, a website with all the listings um, available opportunities, whether in-state or out-of-state, um, just pay attention to those and it's pretty easy to find um, an opportunity through there. Yes, thank you all for that, that was helpful. Awesome. Great question. Really great question. Um, I see Chow. Chow, you've got your hand raised. You want to go ahead and unmute? Uh, hi. Uh, thank you so much for holding this different session. Uh, I just have a two-part question first. I'm already started uh, application through Surface, but uh, one part they asked me, what's your primary language obviously as you can hear i was not born here uh so english is not my primary language my question is why they ask me that so uh does it imply if you, first if your primary language is no english we probably like uh, the candidate like me probably will not be like a uh, highly, you know, like uh, we don't have any advantages for something like that. Does it mean that or? So and, please. I'm not sure I completely heard your question, but if English is not your primary language. Um... So uh, does it mean uh, I'm you know, a, a very bad, position like a disadvantage no so we will so if you went to us if you attended a college that was not yeah, yeah. conducted in english um then you don't need to submit any additional test scores but if so if you went somewhere that wasn't in english then we're going to ask you for english language test scores and so you'll be evaluated that way yeah. um so depending on the scores then uh, you know that's going to sort of dictate if if you know, i or yeah i went to my undergrad in california but my primary language is not english so yeah I, as long I, as you as as long as you went to undergrad and you got yourself a post-secondary degree in an accredited institution that was taught in english yeah yeah, you, yeah, don't, yeah. You, you don't need to provide toefl or ielts or anything like that but really that's just those questions are just based yeah. to make sure that you're set up for success, right? Because the, the program is taught in English. So that's why we ask that question. So we can um, so we can determine if you need a TOEFL or IELTS. Uh -huh, yeah. But okay. you don't need one because you got your undergrad in, um, in a US institution that was taught in English. So you're good to go. But that's a great question, a question that a lot of people have. So I appreciate you asking that. And the, sir, uh, secondly, I just want to ask super quick. I know this program is very competitive. So I just want to know what's the average GPA for, you know, like average is fine. Thank you. 
Yeah, I'll, I'll answer that as well and anybody jump in. Um, but usually, yeah, it, it's very competitive. Usually we look, it's a holistic process. Yes. So we don't have like a particular, usually we look at 3.0 GPA and above, right? But that doesn't mean that we won't accept a student that has lower than that if they have, you know, really great experiences, volunteering, um, you know, great personal statement, great letters of recommendation. But usually it's it's safe to say that, you know, 3.0 GPA and above is kind of what we're looking for. But it's easier to get into Brown than you think. I mean, we have around like a 40% uh, acceptance rate. So, and you miss 100% of the shots that you don't take. Uh, so uh, that's, a, that's a great question. Thank you. Thank you so, so much. Sir. Yeah. Uh, Rachel, you want to go next? Sure, thank you. This has been so helpful. Um, I wanted to know if Lucille could describe the um, health services concentration a little bit. Yes, absolutely. Um, so the health service concentration, I'd say it really gives you, like in the first year, you get a like foundational um, experience on what it's what the U.S. healthcare system is about. So for me, coming from Canada, like I didn't necessarily have that. Um, exposure of what how the exactly the U.S. healthcare system works. So you do take a class um, in your first year about that. Um, you also take classes looking at like the quality of how how to measure and um, how to sort of evaluate the quality of healthcare. Um, so you do have like an exposure of like how um, health services are delivered, how um, they're implemented, how to evaluate them, um, and then moving forward, if you decide to pursue like a thesis in one of those areas, it does um, help to inform that later on. Um, but what's nice about like the health services concentration you do even I know Kalashi has a lot more flexibility because he's in the interdisciplinary concentration um, that he gets to choose a lot of his courses you do get two electives, um, no matter what concentration you are in so for me I took um, like public health law and policy as well so you find that um, there are courses that you think would complement um, a certain concentration as well you could easily um, arrange that into your schedule so um, I'd say definitely the first year is very foundational. Um, and then the second year is where you get a little bit more flexibility to adjust according to what your specific interest is. So I hope that answers the question. That was great. Thank you so much. Thanks for the question. Um, Esther. Hi, can you hear me? Yep. Okay, awesome. Um, so I had a question about, um, so I'm inter personally interested in the online program because I would personally like to work full-time while studying part-time. But one of my kind of main goals of wanting to do a master's is to teach like at a community college, perhaps after graduating. So do you guys offer any um, TA opportunities for those who are taking the program online? Like, could I reach out to a professor like, like, I don't know, TA an online course? Um, or are there any opportunities like that? That's a great question. I'll answer that. And it's, and it's a good segue because um, I do want to mention that we do have an online MPH program. I forgot to mention that during the presentation. So thank you for asking this question. Um, so we have an intake for spring and fall of, of next year. And it's a, it's a little bit of a different program. It's, it's a generalist track. So you don't get to choose your concentration or anything like that. Um, but it's, it's 100% online um, and has both asynchronous and synchronous components, which is really cool. As far as like having opportunities for TA ships in the online MPH program, I know we do offer them for the residential program, usually in the second year uh, for students. Um, we, we offer some of those opportunities, but for the online, I, I really don't know. So if you could connect with uh, me or Jen Nazarino, or actually we also have um, Stacy Babb here with us. Stacy just raised her hand. Uh, just Hi, everyone. Raised. Hi. Um, so she's actually an admissions coordinator um, for us and specializes in the online MPH as well. So um, Stacy, do you mind getting that answer for Esther um, and maybe getting back to her, maybe emailing her um, later on today or this week? Yeah, so Esther, um, I'll, be, I'll be happy to reach out to you and answer that question. Um, so. Awesome, thank you. I will actually chat you my personal email, you know, direct message you through the chat. Thank you so much. Yeah, no problem, thank you. Awesome, thank you, Esther, good question. Looks like we only have about four minutes left. So um, I really appreciate these questions. I want to add, let's let's end it with um, 
Any advice? Uh, let's let's ask our students, our panelists, or uh, everybody here. Do you have any advice uh, for prospective students on on their journey, or application advice, or advice about providence, or anything like that? Any words of wisdom um, that you'd like to pass along would be great. Um, and I can call on you, or you can just chime in if you want. All right, I'm gonna call on you. <laughs> Lucille, I see you unmuted first. So I'm gonna, you, yeah. you go ahead first. Um, I was actually just scrolling through the chat to see um, some of the questions. Um, so there are people asking about like what extracurriculars you get involved in when you come directly from undergrad. So um, I know Lena and I are both in that situation. Um, we came directly from undergrad. So for me, I think, um, well, during my undergrad, I tried to sort of diversify my experience. So like get involved in student government, get involved in research early on to see if that was what I wanted, um, because there is the research component um, to this degree. So I think if, you, if you're if you coming directly from undergrad, it's good to have that on your application. Whereas if you worked in the field and then you come back, it's like a little bit of a difference. So um, in undergrad, I guess, try to get like the extracurriculars <laughs> um, like in your application as much as possible. So they know that you're, um, you're actively going to be engaged in the community um, at Brown. Um, and I'd say as well for like letters of recommendation, I'd say, well, for the entire application in general, if you tell sort of, I know you don't have to go into like details about your entire life story, but if you sort of make the application in a way so that, um, for example, like the, uh, the recommendees, they tell like different parts of your story. Like, for example, I had someone who um, knew me through student government activities, like I had them write me a letter, I had someone from research that I was involved with during undergrad also write me a letter. So in a way it sort of complements sort of what everything that I wrote in my personal statement. So it kind of, in a way the personal statement should tie everything together, but then the recommend, recommenders could sort of attest to like one certain aspect. So that's what I guess worked for me. I don't, <laughs> I don't know hundred percent if that's like a universal thing, but um, I'd it say that. It sounds like good that's advice. <laughs> That's the approach that I took with it. So um, hopefully that'll help with your applications. And um, I guess if I had any advice, it would be um, once you do get accepted, hopefully income to Brown, um, don't be afraid to let your interest, like in, to, to see what other things are out there in terms of your academic interest. Um, when I came here, I was like Lucille, I was a health services concentration major because I thought that would be the most akin to say, Health policy and management. But after taking some courses in my field and also seeing courses outside of my field, like public health law and policy, like um, um, courses about like the health insurance payment reform, I realized I wanted to do more in those areas of healthcare management and to let myself be more um, open to the research that could come with that as well. So the professors here will definitely tell you exactly what they know to help you make your own best decisions. And it can really help you decide what you want to do with that as a career or internship to explore that even further as well. So Brown is really good at being flexible with your, you know, academics. So always take advantage of that. I don't feel like you're stuck in, in one place. Yeah, and I guess I'll just kind of end it. I know we have like a minute left, um, but I know that a lot of you similar to me probably had you know, maybe like a not so traditional track before getting into public health. Like I started out pre-med and I thought that's what I wanted to do. Um, and so don't let that like, you know, show like the fact that it, that might be a lot of your academic history or things like that. Don't let it discourage you, I guess, um, because there's a reason you are passionate and want to go into public health now. And I think, just making that case for yourself and really vouching for your passions and um, why you wanna uh, contribute to the field of public health um, in your personal statement, that'll, that'll shine through. So if that does sound like you, if you have kind of, um, you know, an academic history that maybe didn't match up with public health in the beginning or something like that don't be discouraged because that was me and honestly all of those pre-med classes kind of led me to um kind of figuring out what i wanted to do with my future anyways so it was all like kind of it paid off in a way and so um 
yeah, just kind of don't be afraid to advocate for yourself and, and your personal statement and um, really talk about your accomplishments and, and how that and why you want to be in the field of public health now. So, yeah. Yeah, I think I, I think that's a perfect way to, to end our session. I want to be mindful of everybody's time. I want to thank you. I want to thank everybody that joined us, all of our guests, first and foremost, all of you that are passionate about public health. It's awesome. If we didn't get to answer your questions, we're so sorry. Feel free to reach out to us directly. Like we're always here if you need us. I went ahead and um, put my information in there. Uh, and I want to thank, of course, MPH leadership, Annie, Diane, Stacy, all of our current students, Lena, Lucille, Kalechi. You guys are amazing. We really appreciate you. And uh, yeah, we, we hope this is just the beginning of the journey and we'll talk to you soon. Thanks so much. Have a great day.